Hey guys, this is Mr. C, and in this video, we're going to look at correlation between what's called <clears throat> two pairs or pairs of bivariate data, which basically means an ordered pairs. And so what we do when we look at correlation is we try and see if two sets of data have some relationship with each other. Either it's up or down, or sometimes it's none, sometimes it's weak, and sometimes it's strong. And so we're gonna look at each of these graphs here. And I'm, you, I know you've probably heard of this before, so this is just going to reinforce a previous lesson, I'm sure. But when we look at these graphs, we're going to look at the behavior of how the X and Y values of each order pair are related throughout the whole entire set of them. So let's look at number one. Number one, we have all of these dots that have already been plotted, and we call this a scatter plot. And so on the scatter plot, we have these dots. And on these dots, um, they're, they're either gonna go kind of up or down or maybe not anywhere close to each other. These, if you look at it, they kind of all look like this. And if I kind of circle them in, they kind of all look like they have this upward trend from negative to positive or from left to right. And they do li look like as the X values get bigger, the Y values of the order pairs are more than likely getting bigger as well. It's not very close though, because the dots are kind of spread out. And so we would say that this would be positive correlation. So I'm gonna write the word positive here. And it's weak or strong. Well, this one's kind of weak because uh, the dots are kind of spread out, but it does look like it has this upward kind of a trend to it. All right, let's look at the next one. Number two, this one, the dots kind of, they're all kind of clustered around the x-axis here, but they're all kind of spread out like this. And so it doesn't look like there's any real upward or downward motion. So if I kind of box these in, they all just kind of cluster on the x-axis. So this would be relatively no correlation. All right, let's take a look at number three this time. Number three has our dots kind of going in this downward direction from negative to positive, from left to right, and they are pretty tightly packed together. So that's pretty, pretty tightly packed together. It looks pretty good. So that was what we call negative correlation. So that would be negative. And that would be strong because they're pretty tightly packed together. All right, let's look at number four. And number four has these dots. And if I kind of circle them in here, they're definitely not as spread out as number one. They're more tight, tightly compact you know, together. And it is going up from left to right here. So we're gonna say that that's positive, strong. We'll call that strong correlation. All right, then we look at number five. And number five, the dots kind of randomly are scattered, right? There's not really any upward or downward trend. If I look at them, they're kind of just all over the place like this. And for this one, we would say relatively no correlation. All right, and finally, number six. If we look at these, we see the dots kind of uh, clustered going down like this. Um, it's definitely not as strong as this one. So for this one, for number six, we probably say negative, but we'd say probably weak because it's definitely weaker than this one. All right, so now that we've looked at correlation and we kind of see what it's all about, now we're gonna look at a problem that we have. And this one, we read the question. This looks more like what our EOC looks like. And this one says, a biologist recorded the wing beats per second of several hummingbirds with different masses. The data recorded is shown below, and we have some data in this table. 
it says to make a scatter plot of the data below. So on our scatter plot, um, we have nothing labeled on the axis, so we need to do that first. So what we might want to do is have this axis, which is going to be mass. Uh, we might want that one to go by maybe 0.5. So 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, then 2.5, 3.0, I'll skip one, 3.5, 4.0, 4.5, 5.0. All right, so why I go from 0 0.5 to 5.0? I mean, why am I going by 0 0.5s every time? Well, if I look at my masses, the biggest one is 4.5, so I'm definitely going to be a little bit shy of 5.0. I want to fit them all on my graph, and so that's why I went by 0 0.5s this time. For my wing beats per second, and I'll just call that, I guess, B for wing beats, uh, my biggest one there, it looks like it's 90. So if I go by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, I'll definitely be able to fit uh, my biggest one of 90 on there, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and plot all the dots for the scatter plot. All right, so let's take this marker here. So let's do 3.160. So 3.1 would be maybe a little bit after three, and then 60 would be about right here. So we can probably put that one about right there. Okay, so that's this one. 2.085, so 2.085 would be right in the middle, right here. 3.250, this is 3.5, so 3.2 would be a little bit past that. 50 would be, be about right there. You just have to guess. 4.045, so 4.045 would be right in the middle. 3.755, 3.7 would be about right there. 55 right in the middle, so we're about right here. 1.990, 1.990, one point nine is right before two point zero, and ninety is all the way at the top, so maybe right there. And four point five forty, which should be the exactly this dot right here. All right, so let's take a look at those dots. Does there seem to be some kind of a relationship between mass of a hummingbird and the wing beats per second? It does look like as the mass gets larger, the wing beats get smaller and that would make sense because as it gets heavier it's not going to be able to have as many wing beats as a lighter bird and so if we look at our data our data is kind of scattered here in the scatter plot like this and so that definitely looks like a downward trend negative trend and it looks pretty strong so it says on the bottom does the scatter plot display Strong positive correlation, weak positive correlation, strong negative, weak negative, or relatively no correlation. So my answer to that would be strong negative. Okay, so how do I know it's strong negative but without just looking at it? Well, sooner or later, you guys are going to do things like uh, lines of best fit using technology. If you look at technology, um, you're going to find out later that this data right here, if you put it into the computer, will have what's called an R value, which is a correlation coefficient of negative 0.9607. Now, a lot of problems on the EOC will give you that R value and you have to interpret it. That means that this data is very strong and is strong negative because you're really close to negative one here. And so without knowing a whole lot about correlation coefficients, you will later, um, I'm now pretty confident in my answer of strong negative but then I was at the very beginning anyway because of how tightly those dots were around each other. So these are just a few problems dealing with correlation. Remember to like my video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.